In this presentation, we will be exploring ideas that led human beings to reaching new heights. The first people that come to mind when we think about firsts in aviation history are, of course, Orville and Wilbur Wright. However, the world has been long filled with dreamers, and the basic idea behind flight has been around even longer. Accomplishments in any form come from discoveries made over a long period of time. In a sense, we are standing on the shoulders of giants, like Archimedes, one of the great, greatest mathematicians in ancient Greece. He figured out the principle of buoyancy more than 2,000 years ago and may have conceived of flying machines lifted by his buoyant force theory. But nothing really got off the ground until the summer of 1783, when the Montegolfier brothers created a balloon that reportedly sent a sheep, a duck, and a chicken on an eight-minute flight over France. The two brothers worked for their family's paper company. As a side project, they began experimenting with paper vessels elevated by heated air. Over the course of a couple of years, they developed a hot air balloon very similar in design to the ones we use today. So the first brothers of flight, that goes to the Montegolfier brothers, who got their feet off the ground first. What the Montegolfier brothers observed by watching laundry drying over a fire was that air formed pockets that billowed upwards. They believed that the smoke contained a special gas, which they called the Montegolfier gas. And this Montegolfier gas had a special property in which they called levity, to levitate. Their experiments led us to the understanding that warm air rises. So why does warm air rise? To understand this idea, we see that the flame heats up the air molecules inside the cube on the right. The molecules move faster and faster as they're heated, and they spread out, making the hotter air less dense than the colder air. That is, there are fewer molecules per unit of volume in the hot air than there is in the cold air. So why does a hot air balloon float in the air? Hot air balloons are based on this very princi scientific principle that warm air rises in colder air. Essentially, hot air is lighter than cold air because it has less mass per unit of volume. A cubic foot of air weighs roughly 28 grams, about an ounce. If you heat that air by 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it weighs about 7 grams less. Therefore, each cubic foot of air contained in hot, a hot air balloon can lift about 7 grams. Now that's not much, and this is why a hot air balloon needs to be so huge. In order to lift a thousand pounds, you need about 65,000 cubic feet of hot air. So how does density relate to hot air balloons? Density is the relationship between mass and volume of an object, where the mass of an object is measured in the amount of stuff or matter that it's made of. We measure this typically in grams found using an electronic balance. Well, volume is measured is a measure of the amount of space an object takes up in three dimensions. You can determine the volume of a regularly shaped object by using the formula length times width times height. Typical labels for this are small things would be centimeters cubed or things that are larger, meters cubed. Using this property of matter, we can determine if an object will float or sink in a particular medium. When we compare densities, we have to look at two objects. We look at an object's mass and we look at an object's volume. Consider the effect on the relationship between mass and volume in the example above. Let's consider that the mass of these two objects are equal. We can see that the volume of these two objects are very different. The large object takes up a thousand times more space. In order to make a hot air balloon float, it's important to maintain a very low mass while maximizing our volume. Does the volume of a hot air balloon matter? Tiny balloons aren't actually of much use because they have less volume and provide less lift. If you think about this problem in terms of a boat carrying heavy weights out to sea, you need a really big ship. A ship that will displace more water can carry a heavier load. In exactly the same way, you need a big hot air balloon to lift a big weight because you need it to create more lift with a large volume of hot gas. Just to lift an adult man's weight, you need about 13 feet in radius with the air inside heated up to a temperature of about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That explains why hot air balloons are generally so large. 
Modern hot air balloons are made of three different parts, the basket, the burner, and the envelope. The basket is the part of the balloon which holds the pilot and passengers. Balloon baskets are made of woven wicker, which is both light and highly durable, which enables the basket to withstand the pressure exerted on it during the flight and when landing. The burner uses liquid propane to ignite the burners that direct the flames towards the envelope. This heat, this heats up the air inside the balloon and allows it to expand to provide lift. The envelope is the top part of the balloon. The fabric, which becomes inflated, contains hot air. Envelopes are usually made of nylon, which is highly resistant to damage. Balloon envelopes can also be made into countless different shapes. What does it take to make an envelope? To make an envelope, individual panels are sewn together to make gore panels. These seams provide strength and rigidity on a horizontal plane. The gore panels are then sewn together vertically. Once sewn together, the shape of the envelope takes place. Volume of the envelope is very important when it comes to providing lift. Balloons that contain more hot air will stay afloat longer with ad without adding any additional heat. The shape of your gore panel is an essential variable in assuring that your balloon has a maximum volume. Determining the number of panels will also play an important role in achieving a balloon that takes on the desired shape. In summary, we know that hot air rises. Heated air molecules spread out or expand and bounce around, and the space becomes less dense than the surrounding space. Increasing the air temperature inside the balloon envelope makes it less dense than the air, thus making it lighter than air. Knowing this, we'll need to consider what we know about density in order to make our balloons as lightweight as possible while keeping our volume at a maximum. In our next engineering challenge, you'll be designing your very own balloon. You'll be creating a gore panel template that will result in the shape and size of your balloon envelope. I'm looking forward to you climbing to the sky.